Hi everyone, welcome to this class where we are going to learn what is friction. So we are going to talk about the concept of friction, what exactly it is and I am going to make the concepts crystal clear for you. So be sure you are paying attention and keep your pen and paper ready. So let's go ahead and really understand what is friction. All right, and before we get started, I just want to say, do check out the other courses on our website. We have uh, physics, chemistry, maths for CBSE class 8, 9, and 10. So if you guys haven't taken the other courses, uh, do take them. We have it for ICSE as well. So physics, chemistry, maths for class 8, 9, and 10. And then we have, you know, the international board IGCSE courses, and we also have these Java coding courses. So I'm going to be taking live classes in this uh, beginner level as well, where we'll, doing, uh, we'll be doing, you know, programming practice and doubts and stuff and important stuff here. And uh, the live classes of the advanced course have just started. So if you guys are interested in registering for these coding courses, you'll really learn programming in a very interesting way from me. And uh, you'll get your concepts uh, of programming clear. And best part is you can pick up any language. Java is a great language to learn programming. So do take a look at our other courses and uh, uh, please do share it with your friends. So are you guys ready? Should we go ahead and start the topic of friction? All right, let's start, right? So if I ask you this question, why does a rolling ball stop after some time? So I'm sure all of you played soccer, football, right? So when you kick a ball, what do you notice? That after some time, the ball automatically comes to a stop, even if nobody is stopping it. When the ball is rolling, automatically it comes to a stop. Why is that? Let me ask another question, right? So, uh, I have not played golf. Have you guys played golf? Or I played that mini golf, right? Not the proper professional golf. So, when you hit a golf shot, many times, you know, the golfers are like, oh no, the ball didn't go into the hole, right? This situation happens if you watched it on television. So, again, the golfer did his best to hit the ball and the rolling ball stops just before going in, right? So, it comes to a stop. Who stops the ball? What is, how does it stop? What do you guys think? Very good. Friction of the grass, friction of this surface. Very good, very good. So that's why I'm starting with these questions, right? And I'm sure you guys know how to ride a bicycle or you've uh, tried it definitely. So how does the brake of a cycle work? You know that you apply the brakes. So when you're riding the cycle, you apply the brakes here. You guys can see this is the brakes here. So these are the brakes. Can you guys see? This portion here, can you see? So these are the brakes on the cycle, on the wheel. So how do the brakes work? When you apply the brakes, how do they stop the cycle wheel? How does a matchstick light up? All of you have seen, right? You strike a match, you strike the matchstick on the matchbox. How does the matchstick light up? When you take a matchstick and you strike it on the box, you see that it burns. What is the answer to all these questions? Very good. Friction between the matchstick and the box. So, excellent. If you look at all these questions, the answer is friction, right? What stops the rolling ball? You guys got it right. It is the force of friction. So, if you draw it here on the grass, it is the force of friction. It's the force of friction that stops the ball. Same way here, you guys got it right that when the ball is going like this, it is this force again on the grass, friction which is going to stop the ball. Same way here, it's the friction in the brakes that is acting. So yes, the answer is friction everywhere. And here between the matchstick and this uh, matchbox, right? You have seen that rough surface. So next time, look at it carefully, right? So between the matchstick and the match matchbox, you can see that rough surface. It is that friction which generates some heat and causes the matchstick to burn. So one question is, what is the direction of friction? What, fr uh, what direction does it act in? So let's try a simple experiment and you guys can try it right now. So if you're sitting on a table, just go and get a book, you know. So get a book or an object like this. So here you can see there's a book placed on a table. All right. Now let's imagine I push, I try to push the book this way. So, or you try to push the book. So, do it right now. So, if you try to push the book or some object on the table, can you experience that there is some friction, right? So, which way are you applying the force? So, let's say you are applying the force this way. So, you are applying a force this way. So, let's label it with F. 
So, this is your force. And you notice that there is some resistance, right? Or if you push the book, it will stop after some time. So, in this case, can you tell me what is the direction of friction? Can you guys write here? Fantastic. Manoj is saying opposite Adarshini, right? Madhavan, Ishan, excellent guys. So, which way should I draw the arrow? You guys are absolutely right. The force of friction will be opposite. Yes, all of you agree? So, everybody agrees with this? Very good. Now, let us say we put uh, the forces this way. So, if you apply instead of this way, let us say you applied the force this way. And you guys can try it right now. So, let us say the force is this way. So, I am going to erase this, right? Will the direction of friction remain the same? Yes or no? Will the friction remain the same? Very good. So, if we consider this the north direction, absolutely you guys are telling right. Friction will be in the opposite direction. Friction is also a force, right? And it has a direction. So, fantastic. Friction will act in the opposite direction. Similarly, if you change the force this way. So, if you make the force this side, let us say from this side you are applying the force. Now, what will be the direction of friction? Again, very good. Sian is saying opposite, again opposite. So, I can no longer draw this. I have to change the diagram, right? My friction will now be from this side. So, how do we write the answer? What is the direction of friction? What will you write, guys? What is the answer? Opposite direction, but opposite to what? Like if I just say opposite direction, opposite to what? Can you guys tell me? Very good. You can say opposite to the force or usually in the books, you will see the answer is written that it is opposite to the direction of motion. So, let us write that down. Friction acts in the direction of friction is it is opposite to the direction of motion. So, do you guys agree? Sometimes if there is no motion, yes, it will the motion that it is trying to go that way, right? Or it is opposing the force. But if there is motion, if the book is moving, definitely it will be. So, friction we can say it opposes the motion. So, you can say force of friction because it is opposite to the direction of motion. It is kind of opposing the motion. Do you guys agree? So, you can uh, read whatever definition is given in your book. Usually, it is something like this, right? Oppo opposite to the motion or opposing the motion. So, we can say friction. What is friction? Friction is a force. All of you agree with this? Just like you applied a force here, friction is also a force that opposes the motion. Very, very important. Will friction ever help the motion? Does it ever help the motion? No. So, friction is like the opposition party, right? It is always opposing the motion. So, in this example also, what was the motion of the ball? So, when the golfer hit it, what is the motion of the ball? Let us mark it here. You All of you agree that he hit it towards the hole. So, the motion is this way. Yes, this is the direction of motion and friction obviously is acting in the opposite direction. And the golfer really feels sad. So, the golfer since the ball did not go into the hole, he does not win. So, who does he blame? He blames the force of friction here. Can you see? Because it is opposing the motion. Do you guys agree? Sometimes friction helps the golf also, right? If he hits it too hard, friction slows it down. So, that is why it comes with practice. It slows it down so that, you know, it can go into the hole because if it goes too fast, it can roll over it or go towards the side, right? So, but in this case, it is friction that is stopping the ball because it is opposing the motion. And please remember, friction is also a force. It is not some magical thing that we do not know. It is force. And remember, we have talked about force in our previous chapter. So, if you guys have missed the classes, all the recordings have been uploaded. Please watch the recordings. We will also be putting more quiz and questions as well. So, do practice that once they are up next week. And also, please watch the other videos on force. Very, very important to get the concept of force because friction is also an example of a force. Do you guys agree? Yes, very good. It is in the opposite direction as you guys are drawing the arrow, right? Opposing the motion. So, if I ask you which surface will have greater friction, again from your common sense and experience, right? Will it be a marble surface or the road? So, what do you guys think is the answer here? 
So which surface has greater friction? Is it the marble or is it this road? Very good, very good. All of you are giving the correct answer. The answer is the road has greater friction, right? So we can clearly say greater friction is of the road. So why is that? Because the marble, marble is smooth, right? So marble is smooth. And in comparison, the road is definitely rough. So from our experience, we know that a rough surface, right? A rough surface causes greater friction. Do you guys agree? And we'll understand why. So from your experience, you know that a rough surface causes greater friction. And you can try this with a simple experiment. If you take a ball and you roll it on a marble surface, okay? So let's say you take a ball and you roll it on a marble surface. So you apply a force and roll it here. And you take the same ball and let's say you apply the same force. Okay. If you apply the same force on the same ball, in which case will it travel further distance before stopping? Can you guys tell me? Exactly. You know from experience it's the marble. In fact, marble is slippery, right? So when, uh, uh, when there is water, there's more chance of slipping, right? So you know that. And so definitely the ball will travel much further. The ball travels further in the marble, travels greater distance. So all of you agree? That is why rough surfaces have greater friction. Rough surfaces have greater friction as compared to smooth surfaces. So now let's understand we, are, we have understood this thing that friction is this force which opposes the motion, right? And it's acting between two surfaces. So let me ask you, what is the cause of friction? As we saw here that when you're applying a force on the book, when you apply a force on the book, automatically there's a friction force in the opposite direction, opposing the motion of the book. Sometimes you have to apply, right? If you apply too less force, the book will not move. Do you guys agree? If you apply too less force, then the book doesn't move. So when there's no motion, we call that static friction. There's dynamic friction. We'll talk about that later, right? Static and kinetic friction. But first, let's understand the basics that when you apply a force, there will be a frictional force in the opposite direction. But what is the cause of this force? Can anybody say that? What is the, how is there a force of friction between the two surfaces? Because ideally, we don't want the force to be there, right? When we want to push the book, we want the book to go. We want the book to move. But this force is always irritating us, right? It is in the opposite direction. Why does it act? Exactly. That's what we are trying to discuss. That what is the cause of friction? What is the cause here? So all of you are agreeing that the friction is acting between two surfaces, right? So you need two things. Is, will there be friction when there's only one thing? Yes or no? You need two things, two surfaces. You need two surfaces for friction to be there. Absolutely right. So to understand, let's kind of, you know, so let's say this table was a marble table instead of a wooden table. There would have been lesser friction. Do you guys agree? If the table was very smooth and let's say, you know, uh, sometimes the books have that laminated cover. So if the book is very smooth, the table is very smooth, there will be you know, less friction. All of you guys agree. But when you look at a book, when you pick up a book, does it appear rough or smooth? It appears more or less smooth. And even the table appears to be smooth. So we are wondering that why is there friction? It's not like that you have put the book on a road. It's on a table. Let's say it's not very smooth like marble, but still it's a smooth polished table. So let's say the table is polished. It's a wooden table and the book is also a smooth book. So it does not appear to be rough to us, to our naked eye. But now is the interesting part. If you zoom in, so let's say, guys, we zoom in here. So let's imagine we zoom into this part. It's like when you uh, pinch on a photograph, right, on the phone. Let's say we zoom into this. And now let's look at the surfaces. So I've drawn this, right? So here, basically, this is something like the book here. So this is your book surface. And this is the table surface. So if you look at it, if they were perfectly smooth, perfectly smooth, then will there be friction? Let's imagine in the ideal case that 
they are perfectly smooth very good guys so if they are perfectly smooth right there will be no friction but the reality is it appears to be smooth so if you look at it this the two surfaces right they appear to be smooth we can write that here but let's say you zoom in further you zoom in further let's say with a microscope right and you look at the surfaces very good as you guys are saying the actual surfaces will appear to be rough what does that mean let me visualize it for you let's say if you look at this book surface it will actually look something like this it is a bit rough okay so i'm just drawing it here just as a visualization so are you guys understanding what i'm trying to say that the book surface will appear to be rough it's having like these hills on it right rough edges again at a microscopic level your real book you won't see it like this right so this is again zoomed in at a microscopic level all right similarly the table surface will also appear to be rough so you guys are getting the picture here so please take a look at what i'm trying to visualize here for you that this is the edge of the table and the edge of the book and it appears to be rough uh, sorry it appears to be smooth but when you look at it in reality at a microscopic level they are actually rough right let me see if i you know i can smoothen this out a bit further yeah i think with the thicker pen it's easier so then you guys will get a better visualization so let me just quickly smoothen this out and now what do you guys think if these rough edges is there will that cause friction yes or no at a microscopic level will it cause friction what do you guys think yes or no so you know i'm being like a nursery kid here doing some coloring right this is like art class for me let me just shade all of this portion so that it looks nice for you guys all right that looks better okay so there you can see all those hills and rough edges right so in reality it looks like this it looks like a pair of teeth right it's looking like teeth right okay so very good so basically what can we say even on a smooth surface there are irregularities on the two surfaces there are irregularities on the two surfaces so all of you agree with this there are irregularities on the two surfaces and what happens as a result of this irregularity do you guys agree like these teeth will interlock okay so there will be interlocking interlocking of the two surfaces and this my friends is the cause of friction okay the interlocking of these two surfaces right because of the irregularities there is interlocking they are actually getting locked right at a microscopic level can you see they are getting locked here they are getting stuck and so then when you push this book when you apply a force when i apply a force because of these interlocking they are sort of like getting stuck right getting stuck here that causes friction so if you put a force here there will automatically be a friction right so let's say you apply a force like this on the book automatically there is going to be a friction in the opposite direction so there will be a frictional force in the opposite direction yes so this is the answer what will you write in your answer they ask it is due to the irregularities on the two surfaces right so even though the surfaces appear smooth of course if they are rough there will be more irregularities right rough surfaces have more irregularities so do you guys agree that the interlocking will be greater on the rough surfaces or less what do you think rough surfaces will the interlocking be more or less more very good so more interlocking means more a uh, friction more irregularities right on rough surfaces so more interlocking there will be greater friction so this is the answer to the cause of friction all right so i'll just move away so that you guys can see the slide now let's try to measure friction so you guys can try this experiment right let's say you have this chair okay and if you apply a force if you apply a very tiny force let's say i apply a very tiny force or let's say i try to pull the chair instead of a push let's say i try to pull the chair with a very tiny force will the chair move 
Will this chair move? No. Right? You guys agree? The chair is not going to move. So who's stopping it? Who's stopping the chair, guys? Friction, right? And it's friction. Where is the friction acting here in this entire chair? So let's say you're trying to pull it this way. This is your tiny force. Where is the friction acting? Is it acting here, here, here? Where is it acting? Can you guys tell me? So where is the friction in this case? It is opposite direction, but where? Very good. It's on the legs of the chair, right? It's on the ground, right? So you know that there's going to be friction, right? So on all the four legs, so we can just approximate it to be one force, but it's actually on all the four legs. So definitely there is friction, right? So if you add them up, right? So there is friction on the legs, right? So we are trying to pull it with a, in this case, the friction is greater than the tiny force. So this force is very tiny. The chair will not move. Okay, but let's say we want to measure the friction. So in this case, the forces are not equal, right? Friction is greater. So you will start pulling it with a little more force, little more force. And a time will come when the chair just starts to move. Do you guys agree? If you keep increasing this force, so no, now it's no longer tiny. If you keep increasing this force, do all of you agree that a time will come when the chair just starts to move? Okay. And when the chair just starts to move, when the chair is just about to move, what can I say? What is the relation between the, uh, the force we are applying and the friction? Can you guys tell me when it is just starting, just about to move? What is the relation? Can you guys tell me between the force and the friction? Which one is greater? So relation means I'm asking, yes, they are in opposite directions, but which one is greater? when it is just about to move means it's not started right what can i say about the forces that force the force that we are pulling it with right basically our pull is going to be equal to the friction do you guys agree with me they're just equal because it's just going to move it still hasn't moved right so there it's like balanced equal yes so this means can we say that our pull force is exactly equal to the friction on the four legs of the chair, right? So this will help us measure the amount of friction because we have adjusted our force to be equal to the friction. So we can say friction equals to our force. So I can reverse this. I can say friction. Therefore, when it is just starting to move, we can say friction is equal to our force, right? Equals our force, the pull. Yes or no? But now the question is, how will you practically measure it? Any guesses here? So we know that when we pull a chair or if you push a chair, same thing, right? So let's say you pull a chair, friction is exactly equal to the force, but how will you practically measure it? What is the unit of friction? Do you guys know? How do you measure it? Very good. So friction is measured in Newton. It's a force, right? So how will I measure it? Okay, very good. Yajas is saying spring balance. Excellent. So what you guys can do here is, let's say you connect a spring balance. So rather than just pulling it with your hand, what is the smart thing you can do is you connect a spring balance. Have you guys seen a spring balance? Have you guys seen a spring balance, right? Or usually it looks, you know, where the entire spring is within the box, right? So I'll just draw it like that. Anyway, so you, are, you guys are getting the idea, right? So this is like our spring balance here. So what is the smart thing we'll do is that we will not directly pull the chair. We will pull it using a spring balance. Now, what is the advantage of that? So we will connect the chair. Spring balance has a hook. So we can connect the chair with the spring balance and then pull the chair. So let's say I'm standing this way and pulling the chair with the spring balance. So will this reading, what will be the reading of the spring balance? It will show the reading of my force. Yes or no? Do you guys agree that the reading on the spring balance will equal to the force I'm pulling it with? Because spring balance will stretch with that, right? Yes, all of you agree. Very good. So reading of the spring balance, let's say, for example, let's say the reading on the spring balance is 50 Newton. Okay. So let's say the reading here is 50 Newton. So what is the force? What is our force? What is our force here? If the reading is 50 Newton, our force equals 50 Newton. Yes, our force equals 50 Newton. So what is the friction? 
what is the friction in this case because the chair you, you're not pulling it too fast right chair is just about to move just about to move so all of you agree that friction equals to the force therefore friction will be 50 newton so this is a very smart and simple way using a spring balance you can pretty much accurately very closely measure the friction with a very simple experiment isn't this interesting guys exactly so please look at it again you have just pulled you have pulled the chair rather than directly through the spring balance so spring balance reading equals to your force and because the chair is just about to move friction equals to the force that you applied so friction is also 50 newton so therefore we can say in this case we can say therefore friction is also 50 newton all right do you guys agree with that so just to recap what we discussed right so if you write the reading on the spring balance is that a measure of the frictional force is the reading in our experiment if the chair is just about to move right so the experiment we just did where you are pulling the chair with the help of a spring balance right so is the uh, is that a measure of the frictional force yes or no yes absolutely right in this experiment so the answer is yes what is what unit is uh, friction measured in so what unit do we use newton very good i know you guys respect isaac newton sir isaac newton but please write the newton when you're writing the full name always you know when they ask in the exam don't just write capital n because what does capital n mean does it stand for netherlands right what are you talking about right so please don't write capital n write the whole thing newton and then in bracket the capital n but the unit name starts with small letter so when you write unit name in physics please see it starts with a small letter i know even i respect sir isaac newton right so much of the physics book is because of him but capital n is the abbreviation small n is newton and what is the direction of friction so if you're pulling the chair this way what is the direction of friction in this case guys what will you write the answer what is the direction of friction opposite to the force because here there's no motion very good so in this case you can write it like that opposite to the force f opposite to the force yes or no do you guys agree fantastic so see visualize this experiment go ahead and try it out after this class right so please try this experiment even if you don't have a spring balance you can use a rope and try to pull the chair okay it's easier to apply the force with one hand okay don't break the chair okay or don't hurt yourself but try this experiment try to see that if you uh, push with a small force then you'll see because we'll discuss in the next class when the object is not moving it's called static friction and then you have you know uh, when the object is moving it's kinetic friction right so those cases we'll discuss the different types of friction but i want all of you to try this experiment after to the class right then you'll understand physics better because physics is all about the physical things not imagination physical stuff right excellent so everybody please try this so remember uh, what are the two types of forces you can have force at contact or non-contact force is also called force at a distance so which one is friction in this case does friction require contact or does it not require contact what do you guys think excellent so clearly because you know in friction contact is a must and you guys can visualize this right we discussed that right the irregularities of the surface two surfaces they have to be in contact with each other okay there has to be physical contact for there to be friction so definitely you guys are right the answer is friction is force of contact right contact is necessary all of you agree with that if you have doubts please ask so what happens if we rub our hands you guys can try it right now right so if you uh, take your two hands and if you rub it like this come on try it so if you rub your two hands what do you guys feel what do you feel the hands are getting warm right the hands are getting warm why is that very good so definitely you feel when you rub the hands there is heat generated right the hands feel warm what is the cause of that why exactly very good friction produces heat right because the two surfaces are rubbing with each other right so this movement right this movement this uh, right when the surfaces are rubbing because of the friction it is producing heat 
those guys are hitting each other right you can think like that the two surfaces are hitting each other they're interlocking are hitting each other so definitely we can say friction produces heat absolutely right friction is the cause here again let me ask you another question right have you guys ever tried walking on snow or ice it's really difficult you know when i was in my uh, university at uh, uh, maryland in usa you know we were very excited first time it snowed but you know we were like falling on the ground right it's really difficult to walk fresh snow is still okay but once the snow hardens it's really dangerous it's very very slippery you have to be very careful okay so why why is it difficult to walk on snow or ice can you guys tell me yes it is slippery that's right but why is it slippery why why do we feel it's very good so what is the answer because friction is less excellent you guys are giving the correct answer here it is because due to less friction so guys can you tell me is friction good or bad what do you guys think is friction good or bad you guys are diplomatic that's great you guys are telling both one answer good or bad absolutely right Bo both right because you know in machine parts and all friction is bad it causes wear and tear right but in this case when you're walking on ice you want friction otherwise you're going to fall so here friction is good it helps us walk when we walk guys there is friction between us and the surface right whether it's the road or your room friction is good if you're walking on too much slippery surface or there's water on marble you can easily slip very dangerous or water on granite surface very very risky right so you have to be careful exactly so friction is a good thing here friction helps us to walk similarly right i hope this doesn't happen but if you you know you walk and step on a banana peel you may slip again what is the answer here exactly like madhavan is saying if there's no friction then the object won't stop at all exactly because in this case again the banana peel is smooth right smooth and slippery so banana peel is smooth and slippery and again with smooth and slippery surfaces as we discussed this causes less friction there is less less friction uh, between our foot and the banana peel and therefore we tend to slip right feet slips just like on ice so therefore yes exactly so again friction here is good it helps us to walk so this is a summary of what we learned today guys so what did we learn friction very very important remember friction is a force that opposes the motion okay so you can learn whatever definition is given in your book main thing is we are trying to understand the concepts here so definitely learn the definition from your book so what have i written it as friction is a force so if we ask the question what is friction it is a force that opposes the motion right and then we learn today that friction is caused what is the cause of friction very very important it is caused by irregularities on the surfaces in contact and very important word because these irregularities causes interlocking can you guys see that right so irregularities interlocking is of the surfaces that is the cause of friction so even though surface appear smooth but still there are irregularities rough surfaces have greater friction do you guys agree yes rough if the surface is rough definitely it will have greater friction why what is the reason of that if i ask you why what will you say rough surfaces have greater friction so so what's the big deal why can you guys tell me because there will be more irregularities in rough surfaces right rough surfaces have more irregularities so more interlocking do you guys agree more irregularity between the two rough surfaces or if one is very rough right so there will be more interlocking right and that is why friction will be more and obviously the opposite is smooth surfaces if the surface is smooth it will have lesser friction because greater friction means as we discussed there will be more interlocking for the rough surfaces because more irregularities so this is the summary of what we did today so hope the concept of friction is super clear to you now right 
what is friction and definitely we'll be going into the details like what are the types of friction and all of uh, that stuff fluid friction those are coming up in the next classes and as i said do check out the other courses on our website you know we have physics chemistry maths all these great combo courses for class 8 9 and 10 so if you haven't taken the other courses do take them and uh, please do share it out with your friends we have them for icse as well you know class 8 9 and 10 so uh, do take a look at the other courses and if you have friends in the other boards do let them know we have them for IGCSE and we really have these nice Java coding courses so if you guys want to learn computer programming from me you know I've worked at Microsoft for seven years so you know I love teaching programming and Java is a great language to learn coding so you guys can take the combo pack or you can take just beginner or advanced level whatever you feel comfortable right or if you have questions you can send us an email so we have just started the live classes of this and these will also be starting very soon in May so do take a look at these courses and register for them uh, if you haven't done so and please do share it out with your friends. Hope you guys enjoyed the class. So take care and I'll sign off here. Bye bye.